Okay, so this is an overview of the ITTOs for Chapter 11, Project Risk Management. Before I get started, let me mention that if you're interested, we have lots of free PMP prep materials at projectprep.org. We've got cheat sheets, full-length practice tests, note cards, lots of stuff that should be pretty helpful. So there's seven processes in this chapter. Five are in planning, one's in executing, and one's in monitoring and controlling. <clears throat> So with plan risk management, we're defining how we're going to conduct risk management on the project. Examples might be how we're going to identify risks, who we're going to speak with, um, start thinking about how we're going to budget for risk or to address risks or mitigate them. So we're planning risk management. And then we identify risks. We start detecting risks that may affect the project. And then we're going to perform qualitative and quantitative analysis. So qualitative analysis is prioritizing risks by evaluating their probability and impact. So probability is how likely are they, ha they to happen. And impact is if they do happen, how bad will they be? And then we're going to perform quantitative analysis, numerical analysis. So we're numerically analyzing the effect of risks on projects. And we're thinking about uh, the potential cost impacts in dollars or whatever, and the, uh, the time impact in days, typically. And then we're going to plan risk responses, define strategies to address those risks. And then in executing, we're going to implement those risk responses and monitor the risks over time. So we're tracking existing risks and identifying and analyzing new ones. Okay, so here's the first process, plan risk management. Again, we're defining how to conduct risk management on the project. And here are the inputs, tools, and techniques, and outputs. So like all of these plan blank processes, you have the project management plan as an input and individual plans as an output, the risk management plan in this case. So the risk management plan describes how risk will be managed. They include things like the methodology you're going to use, uh, what roles and responsibilities you'll have, budgeting, timing, risk categories, definitions of probability and impact. So it's just how you're going to identify, um, analyze, and respond to your risks. And just some of the tools in this process, you've got expert judgment, data analysis and uh, meetings. All those could be helpful. You can, you can get expert advice on how to handle your risks. Okay, now let's talk about identifying risks, detecting risks that may affect the project. So here are the ITTOs, there's a lot of them. So you see a lot on the left-hand side, on the input side, because there's lots of sources of identifying risks. You basically want to take a look at all of your plans that you've created to see if you've made any assumptions that you may want to track and monitor. An assumption could be a risk. Uh, and then um, as far as our tools, we've got lots of different tools for identifying those risks. And then we'll talk about the key output, the risk register, in just a moment. But let's focus in on some of the tools for identifying risks. You've got document analysis, reviewing document inputs, and you saw a lot on the left-hand side, the inputs, to identify possible risks. Now let's take a look at some of these other techniques, these data gathering and data analysis techniques. So you've got checklists. These are risk identif identification checklists uh, to look at risks from past projects on our new project. So you're documenting things that happened in the past, and you almost walk through a check checklist for your new project, and you say, could, these, could this be a risk for us now? Could this be a risk? Could this be a risk? And so on. Then you have assumptions analysis. You're looking at all of your plans and identifying risks based on inaccuracy or incomplete assumptions. There's a risk that your assumptions may be weak. So if you're trying to get materials from a, a Chinese supplier, you're trying to get Chinese steel or something, and you're assuming that you can get them there from China at a certain price, but maybe, you know, because of political reasons or otherwise, or, um, you know, um, whatever other events in the world, maybe it's difficult to get it and you have to go elsewhere. You're making assumptions. There's a risk that that steel might not be available. You could use a SWOT analysis. You're looking at your strengths, your weaknesses, your opportunities, and your threats. That could help you identify both positive opportunities and uh, negative threats. And then root cause analysis, researching, researching the underlying cause of an issue uh, to, um, to, 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 to identify risk that way. Uh, other techniques you could use are brainstorming, straightforward, and interviewing. You might be interviewing experts to get their feedback on what risks you could face. Then your key output here is going to be your risk register as well as a risk report. But a risk register includes identified risks and response plans, and it's updated during other risk management processes. You can update it as you start analyzing 
and determining how you're going to respond to your risks. <clears throat> right now, you've just identified them. Now we're going to perform qualitative analysis. We're prioritizing risk by evaluating their probability and their impact. So here are our inputs, tools, and techniques and outputs. Obviously, the key input here is going to be the risk register as well as the risk management plan. Uh, and here are some of your tools. I want to focus in on one, the probability and impact matrix. Might look something like this. It's where you're, you're documenting, um, you know, what uh, certain probability and impact scores represent. But if you remember back to the other video, probability is how likely is it to, ha to happen, and impact is if it does happen, how bad will it be? And so there's some, some other techniques for identifying risks. Uh, interviews, expert judgment, facilitating meetings, putting risks in categories, and so on. And your output is going to be, your key output at least, is the update to your risk register. You can see that on the right hand side. Okay, now let's talk about performing quantitative risk analysis. This is where we're numerically analyzing the effect of risks on our project objectives. So here are our inputs, tools, and techniques, and outputs. Obviously, your key inputs here are going to be the risk management plan and the risk register, which you see down below. And the reason why some of the uh, cost estimates, cost forecasts, um, some of your duration estimates, so both cost and schedule data are there, is because you're trying to determine the impact, the quantitative impact, in terms of dollars or money and days. Okay, and then we have our tools and techniques. And I'm going to focus in on two interviews and representation, representations of uncertainty. So interviewing, we're just drawing on experience and historical data to quantify the probability and impact of risks. And then there's the representation of, of uncertainty. We could use statistics, probability distributions, to represent uncertainties and values and to give us some idea of what our potential impact could be to durations and cost. And then there's a few other data analysis techniques to generate or to perform quantitative risk analysis could use simulation, sensitivity analysis, and decision tree analysis. So sensitivity analysis helps us determine which risk could have the biggest impact, and sometimes you see that impact on a tornado diagram. And decision tree analysis is a statistical method that calculates the average outcome when the future includes uncertain scenarios. Um, so a picture's not here, but you may want to refer back to your textbook to see what a decision tree looks like, and it kind of gives you an idea of how much, um, given under, under certain scenarios, how much you could expect to see as an impact if certain risks um, are realized. Then there's simulations. Uh, most common is probably the Monte Carlo simulation. It's a project model. It's where the project model is computed many times or iterated with input values like cost estimates or activity durations, which are chosen at random. And um, based on this project, kind of simulating, kind of like with CAPSIM when you do that, you're simulating what it would be like. You're simulating what your project would be and, and running it many times with certain risks as well as cost estimates or activity durations to kind of see what is most likely to happen. And then the output of that is a histogram, which shows you total cost or completion date, the completion date for your project. And it's all calculated from running this project model many times. Okay, now we're going to talk about planning risk responses, defining strategies and actions to address project risks. So here are inputs, tools, and techniques, and outputs. Again, our key documents here are going to be the risk management plan as an input, as well as the risk register. Let's talk about strategies for threats and strategies for opportunities, though. So as a reminder, uh, risks that have positive effects are called opportunities. Those that have negative effects are called threats. So here are some of our strategies for negative risks or threats. We could avoid them, which is just eliminating the threat or uh, eliminating it altogether, basically. And then you could transfer a risk, so shift it to another person, so you could pay someone else to handle that risk for you. You could mitigate the risk, so reduce the probability or occurrence or impact of a risk. So in this case, it's different than avoiding. In mitigating, you're just reducing the probability and impact. Avoiding, you're getting rid of it altogether. Or you could accept the risk. You could acknowledge that you can't handle every risk or mitigate, mitigate every risk. And so you can't really take any action. And there's strategies for positive risks or opportunities. You want these things to happen. Uh, there's uh, One strategy is exploiting, eliminating the uncertainty by ensuring that the opportunity definitely happens. 
So making sure it does happen without a doubt. Then there's enhance, increasing the probability and or positive impacts. So exploiting is making sure it definitely happens. Enhancing it is just increasing the probability and impact slightly. Sharing is allocating ownership to a third party, so getting help from someone else. So if you work together, maybe the risk is more likely to be realized. Or you could just accept it. You could take advantage of the opportunity if it arises, but you're not going to actively pursue it. Now let's talk about another tool for planning risk responses. There's contingent response strategies. These are responses only if a certain event occurs. So it's not like you're taking um, mitigating activities in, you know, ahead of time. It's just a fallback plan. If something does happen, what are you going to do about it? What's your contingent response strategy, your fallback plan? And again, like these other processes as we move through planning, you're going to be, you may submit a change request if that's needed in this case, or you're going to be updating your risk register. You're going to see that down towards the bottom among some other documents that could potentially be updated, but the most important one here is the risk register. Okay, now let's talk about implementing risk responses, putting risk response plans into effect. So here are ITTOs. Again, you've got your risk register and your risk management plan coming in. And um, on, as your output, you have a change request. So as you implement what you plan to do in your risk register, um, there may be cases where the plans don't go as expected. Your responses aren't working. So you may submit a change to do something differently. And again, you may update your risk register along the way. That's why you see that as an output on the right-hand side. You're just updating your risk register throughout most of these processes. Okay, now let's talk about monitoring risks, tracking existing risks, and identifying and analyzing new ones. So here's our list of inputs, tools, and techniques, and outputs. And again, with all of these monitoring and controlling processes, you have the project management plan going in, which is your plan, as well as work performance data. That's your plan versus your actual. And you have work performance information and change requests coming out. You're turning data into information, and then if things aren't going as, as planned, you submit a change request to, to do something differently. Now let's take a look at some of the tools and techniques as, of monitoring risk. There's technical performance analysis, reserve analysis, and audits, among other things. So audits are examining the effectiveness of our risk responses and the risk management process. So we're kind of looking at our not only individual risks, how we're responding to those, but overall, how are we doing in managing risks and what can we do differently? We might also use reserve analysis. As we monitor our risks, we may compare the amount of remaining reserves, how much we have left in our contingency budget, our contingency, comparing that to what remaining risks we have left over. Maybe we have a little bit more money, a little bit more reserve to address some remaining risks to make sure our project stays on track. Then there's technical performance analysis, comparing technical accomplishments, and may include weight, storage, capacity, and, and so on. 